Hello, today is uh, day number four after my vitrectomy surgery. It is Monday, it's time for the daily report. Uh, so I had surgery on Friday, today is Monday and um, yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty good. I woke up this morning and um, I did have a little bit more sensation as I described yesterday with a bit of a texture and uh, moving my eye, I would actually see some some streaks that will will just blink the moment i blink or move my eye i do see something but they disappear immediately so that uh, lasted for i don't know half an hour it's almost gone but if i want to move my eye suddenly i still see them a little bit but way better than two days before the shade slightly appeared back uh, disappeared yesterday i have to say yesterday afternoon for almost half of the day, my, my eye was was, was uh, perfectly to the day before surgery, so except the floaters. So I was very uh, optimistic. I'm still very optimistic at this point. But uh, yeah, yeah, it's getting better, slightly better every day. So at this point, I have no concerns. Even the shade doesn't seem to be a tear. Maybe it's, uh, it's the retina being impressed, impressed, uh, excited by the light. I don't know. I'm going to find out tomorrow, but I don't. I don't think it's a it's a it's a tear. It doesn't have the sign of a tear. It's just a, a bit of a shade. And since it disappeared yesterday completely, I wasn't really concerned. So that's uh, in a nutshell it. Every time I put the, the drops in, my uh, the blurriness increases slightly. Within four or five hours, it uh, it gets better. Put new set of uh, drops, a little bit blurry. It's not that bad. I actually can cope very well. I can actually read. I can watch TV. I can do a lot of stuff. Of course, I'm trying not to stress my eyes for too much. Yeah, so that's it. I have uh, the appointment tomorrow with uh, with my doctor to have a check. And after that, I don't know what happens. I'm gonna keep putting drops, but. Things look quite good at this point. I do have a bit of pulsating uh, uh, sensation in my eye, but other than that, I, I can't complain. It's um, I don't want to jump uh, to conclusions at this point, but uh, yeah, uh, so far so good. Since um, I promised yesterday I'm going to do a bit of homework, I wanted to talk about today about induction of the post vitreous detachment versus no induction so floaters only vitrectomy has two sides i've mentioned it already but it took me um, a long time to take the decision and it's it was quite stressful because once you take the decision you're gonna you're gonna suffer the consequences so the reading a lot of literature came across uh, all sorts of studies and one of them was uh, a particular Dr. Sebag, and I, I mentioned that he has um, he has um, a long conferences online. You should you should check him out definitely. He made a study. I don't know how many. I don't know seventy people or sixty. Uh, I I won't go into the numbers. I'll let you do your own homework. So according to him, just removing the core vitreous and leave everything else intact, including the, um, the um, post, uh, or the, the vitreous, which is stuck to the, to the retina and also to the lens in front, that will reduce the incidence of retinal tears, which makes sense because, you know, the whole vitreous is stuck to the, to the walls, but if you take only the core, uh, that means there's no, there's no uh, forces uh, pushing, uh, pulling the retina, but that's during the surgery. Uh, interesting fact is after the surgery, apparently only one in 20 cases or 19 cases, please do your, uh, um, do your study, so don't rely on my numbers because I have found all sorts of conflicting information. So according to him, there's a 5% chance, which is basically one eye in roughly 20, that a retinal break will happen later post-operation. Which, which makes sense because if you think about it, uh, if you leave the vitreous still stuck to the retina and you put water inside, you have two different, uh, two different uh, let's call liquids with two different uh, consistencies. And uh, I, 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 don't, I don't know, but uh, it seems like there's, a, there's an inherited risk after the surgery. And this is, this is the information that didn't sit comfortably with me. And uh, according to his uh, study, not doing the PVD is uh, is uh, quite safe in terms of uh, only 20% of people doing this will develop a cataract surgery in comparison with 50%, but that's measured 18 months after. So it's not measured five years after, it's measured 18 months after. So 
it makes sense that this 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 approach will will prevent the traffic of oxygen be, uh, back and forth and it will it will make it harder to reach the uh, the, the lens so the cataract will develop further uh, in in life it doesn't say it will completely prevent it it says 20% will in comparison with uh, with 50% will develop a cataract measured at let's say 18 months two years it doesn't matter so it's a it's a measurement at some point in time it's not it's not a long-term measurement so this is where if you read the conclusion of the report it's um, it's optimistic that uh, not doing the pvd it's better however you need to drill down a little bit and think and use your logic and actually compare with other things and there's a there's a a bunch of other publications online about vitrectomy comparing different studies which are not necessarily consistent so in my personal opinion i i chose not to go with uh, with this because i said to myself you know i know i'm gonna get a cataract i'd rather have it sooner than later later and i cannot deal with the um, with the risk of retinal detachment post operation and it doesn't make any it doesn't make uh, it didn't make sense to me and also just watching different uh, different forums people who didn't have uh, um, post vitreous induced pvd they um, they um, talked about some frills or something and and that that is you know i know a little bit about optics so i know that the 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 uh, light travels through different mediums it will cause some refraction so I can't picture how you get the eye, the, the light going to your eye, meets the lens, gets you know redirected, and after that goes through a bit of vitreous, uh, goes through water or whatnot, which is less dense or I don't know, goes again through some vitreous and, and hits the retina. So I, I think there's too many layers here, and um, yeah, I, I can't I can't make a, a proper judgment, but that, that my logic told me that. Um, maybe not inducing pvd is a, seems like a good idea but i'm not sure i, I couldn't ba balance so my personal preference was uh, with uh, induced pvd as recommended by my doctor just to avoid the potential uh, the potential retinal tear which is post operations which means can happen anytime or may not happen i don't know according to Dr. Sebag was just a 5% chance and the and he was recommended that all the patients considering that should consider this risk which is 5% 5% potential retinal detachment later in life now this 5% is coming from a 1 in a 20 uh, patient so to me the study is not not large enough to call it 5% because you had only one case in 20 so uh yeah my personal view was okay i know i'm gonna get a cataract i uh, established that and uh, if i have it in two years rather than five years of course i'm gonna prefer to have it as long as, as late as possible but if i have it in two years rather than five or six so be it so um yeah the decision process for me was i know i'm gonna get uh, the the evil but you know i know the evil i'm concerned about the evil that i don't know so at least I know the evil, at least I think I know the evil and uh, I'm prepared to deal with it as it comes. Now, nobody can give anyone a guarantee or any, any assessment when this cataract will happen. Uh, my doctor tell, uh, again, my doctor said it's not a question of if, it's a question of when. So I thought that was a, that was a good approach in comparison with other doctors that don't tell you about that. But I'm not going to make a judgment. So in my opinion if you are going into the same kind of uh, decision uh, process i would suggest you google uh, vitrectomy without pvd and you will find you will find information uh, published republished reinterpreted and some other ophthalmologists are taking these studies and put them together and uh, you will discover there's there's inconsistencies in numbers so again i guess what i'm trying to say today do not rely on one statistic use your judgment do your study 
uh, numbers can be misleading, measurements can be misleading, depends when you take them. It's just like global warming, when do you measure? Okay, I'm not going to go into global warming, but what I'm saying is a result and a conclusion of a statistic is dependent on how you do that statistic, when you measure it, or criteria and all of that. So I'm not going to go any further than this because I don't want to go throw numbers and mislead people. I just want to say that again, I'm not a doctor, so you shouldn't take my advice as medical advice and whatnot. I just uh, want to share my process. And I have to say, it was a stressful process deciding what kind of vitrectomy uh, I was going to choose. And also, there's a big factor, which is the doctor's experience. So the doctor's experience will play a huge role because, you know, it depends how much we choose with or without PVD that doctor will leave behind and that can influence things. So, um, yeah, it's not, this is, this is not a crystal ball. There's risks and uh, I guess everyone is, uh, is responsible for their own decisions. And uh, I just wanted to, yeah, to share the PVD, non-PVD um, dilemma, which yeah, it took me took me a few nights uh, with no sleep because once you go ahead, it will impact on what potentially could happen, whatever that is. I will report to you tomorrow, day five, and uh, if I've got nothing else to say, I will probably start decreasing the frequency of these uh, these videos. So I'll do one week, two weeks, one month, two months. I don't know. The way I feel it, I will definitely, uh, if there's any event, I will report. But if if everything goes uh, to plan and everything will, will heal smoothly, there's no point in me doing these daily vlogs. So uh, yeah, that's it. I guess I will see you tomorrow.